I'm going to the Goodwill again, finally, uh, for the first time in a long time, uh, because I'm going to try and get there early in the morning and see if I can get shit before all the eBay vultures scrounge it. Most days I don't end up out of the house until 10 or 11 due to depression and anxiety keeping me up for endless hours the night before. But today uh, I am actually up at the Lord's miserable hour of 8. So I'm going to see if I get out there before they open, maybe I'll have a chance of actually finding some cool shit for once. Instead of what usually happens, which is I get there and all they have left are some broken VCRs and a few tape decks. I swear, things have been bleak as hell lately. I go to the Goodwills and I just don't find anything. That's why you haven't seen a video like this in a while. There's just been nothing. Like, it's been kind of ridiculous. Even the stuff that's like mainstays, the stuff that's always there, hasn't been there. So it's uh it's 8:24 and I'm going to try and get coffee first. Oh man. Wow. I got killer RNG on the coffee shop today. Usually there's like five cars in line here. Got our coffee. Let's get on the freeway. Got here with like six minutes to spare, and yep, that's about right. It was at this point that I realized to my horror that they had rearranged the entire store. All the electronics had been bunched up against the back wall where they really should have been in the first place. This makes it better, but changes my route completely. It took me a while to figure out where like the cameras were, for instance. So we got a MIDI interface, uh, a couple of VCRs over here, uh, security camera recorder, nothing too exciting so far. This was a pretty nice looking VHS deck. It's VHS HQ, it's Sony, it's late era, it's got the jog dial on it and all. But, uh, no S video output, it's not SVHS, eh. Every time you come here, there's a bunch of FireWire audio interfaces, usually like two or three, and they look super cool, but then you realize that they're only FireWire, they probably only work with Mac, and they probably only work with like a PowerPC version of Mac OS, running an ancient version of like Pro Tools, and you just, you, you lose interest right away, and it's a shame, they look so cool. This thing caught my eye immediately. I saw the sliders and I saw something about video on it. I thought, oh, it's some kind of video processor. I very rapidly realized it's for transferring slides and home movies on film, and you have to use it with a camcorder. I'm not sure if the whole thing is here. I think it, you might actually mate your camcorder directly to the lens on the front. I'm not sure how that would work. Here is the most unfortunately named object I've ever seen. It's an OBD2 reader. I don't know why they thought that was a good name for it. I don't normally go for these LCD remote controls, but this thing is a Microsoft and Harman cooperation. I, I had to have it. I stared at this for a while, trying to figure out what the hell it was. Like, it's got USB ports and some weird cavities, and I just could not, I could not for the life of me figure out what this thing was supposed to be. And it wasn't until I looked it up a couple minutes ago that I discovered it's a monitor stand. Uh, it's sort of a plasticky one, but it's missing the legs. You're supposed to jack your monitor up with this, and then it's got USB ports and headphone jacks on it. Okay, the camera sections, the usual film ZLRs, uh, random junk. Uh, I actually have a Pentax lens here for once. Don't normally see autofocus lenses. And then we have this thing. This is really something. It doesn't look like much, just a cheap Video 8 camera, but look at this little flip-out control deck here. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, I immediately threw it in my cart, and then as I was examining it in the cart, I found many more things about it. It's a design juggernaut, and I can't wait to show it to you. Next up, we have a couple of these selfie printers. These are the uh, Canon Dye Sub printers that were all the rage for a little bit, 
uh, before you know people got digital transmission of photos and just gave up on prints, I think. And there were two of them here, and this is one of those weird things where when you see one thing that never shows up at the thrift store, you'll always see two or three, and you wonder, like, who, who was uh, hoarding these? Like, who hoards selfies? Now, this is something very unique. I, at first, I thought this was made out of metal, but it's not. That's all fake. It's all chromed plastic, and that's unusual because this is a Super 8 movie camera, and the vast majority of those that I've seen are from the 60s or before, uh, and they're made entirely out of uh, aluminum, I think, usually. This one's all plastic. Every bit of it is just the cheapest, most garbagey ABS shit. It weighed like an ounce, and I just thought, how would this thing hold up to any kind of use? It turns out that no part of it is metal, I think, except for the uh, the film gate here, and not very good metal at that. I dug my fingernail into it. You can't see it, but I, I swear I actually left a mark. It was that soft, like zinc at best. Felt like lead, honestly. Right below that was this sharp view cam, and this is actually something kind of special. I've seen plenty of these before, but I immediately threw this one in the cart. I, I knew something was going on with it. It looks really neat. It's got S-Video over here on the left, and then it has a PC Connect. That's very unusual. I don't know why it would have that. Uh, and what I found out later, and I don't, didn't even notice it when I was taking this video, it's Mini-DV. I've never seen a Mini-DV view cam. Every time I've been to the thrift store, there's been at least one counterfeit Canon camera like this that's like literally an unusable piece of shit. I don't know where they're all coming from. These things are from like the 90s. I stared at this for a bit, not comprehending what it was. It's a Polaroid pack film holder, and I get that much, but I couldn't figure out what it was for. Holding the pack film for what? Some Googling suggests it's to mount Polaroid film in a large format view camera. Cool if you've got the stuff. And here's one of the specific items I came here for. I was looking for a Polaroid camera, any Polaroid camera that took the film I have. Forgive me, but I'm just going to take a minute to dunk on this thing. This is the smallest belt sander I think I've ever seen. Maybe it's the same size as the 4-inch ones they sell at Harbor Freight, but it just looks so diminutive. I mean, look, when you stand back, this thing is just so tiny. The stand dwarfs it. God, craftsman. Come on. Decorate your house out of Goodwill. Come on, it's a great choice. I went through these remotes for a bit, wondering if I'd find anything interesting, and I did find this. No idea what it's from. It's the weirdest looking remote, and it's got the most hideous logo on it. It almost looks like Hi-Fi, but it's not Hi-Fi. There's always microphones like this here, and I always grab them to see if they're anything interesting. But I later decided it was just a cheap dynamic and put it back. Here's something really odd. It's an Iowa remote of the style that would have been used in the 70s or 80s for uh, console systems. Very expensive ones, like you see in like Harman Kardon, but from T-Base and Surround and CD, this is clearly from the 90s or 2000s. Very odd to see this very high-end console-style remote on just some cheap deck. Now, I almost passed this thing up, but then I realized it's a CD changer of the sort I've never seen before. Instead of using a rotary spindle inside for the discs, it's got these four cartridges that you can take out individually, and the whole front just pops down so that you can take discs out and put them in and whatnot without having to wait for the machine to come around to the right position and uh, bring out your disc. So, as you can see, getting access to your discs is just trivial on this one. I was just going to leave it there, and then I noticed this, on-screen disk management. I was immediately interested. I figured it was just put your disks in there and then index through them, but no. If you turn it around, at first it looks like there's just audio, but then, yep, there it is, composite video out. I had to know what this looked like. So I chased down a TV and a cable, and I got it hooked up, and here's the user interface. You can see it's, uh, you know, it's not high res, it's not low res either. So, it's just about what you'd expect. I don't know when this thing is from, but it's gotta be from the, the late 90s at least. I'm kinda surprised it looks this cheap, but it's got this cute animation uh, when you're switching discs and, and playing discs. The guy puts a disc in the machine and then cranks it to play the disc. This doesn't change animations when you switch tracks, unfortunately, but then when you change discs, he puts it back, trundles, that represents the, the robot arm moving, and then when it gets to the new one, he puts it on and goes ahead and cranks away. Uh, you'll notice this is in random mode. Uh, we're just picking random disks and loading them up, and the reason it's going so fast is because uh, it tries to load disks even if there's nothing in that slot. It can't tell if the slot's loaded before 
uh, it attempts to load a disk from it. So it just has to load it and then reject. Uh, other than that, the interface is surprisingly uninteractive. It doesn't really show you uh, any visualization. It doesn't. Uh, I couldn't even get it when I put discs in it to uh, actually increment the time counter while it was playing. Ultimately, not interesting. Uh, I didn't even have a cute startup sequence. I put it back, but it is a lot cooler than the spindle ones. Another thing I did not buy and had no real interest in but was unused by was this uh, clock radio CD player. It's kind of more integrated than the few that I've seen. You didn't see a lot of these. Usually it was like some big stereo system that you'd get that had a CD player in it. This one's got the, so you get the tuner dial there and stereo speakers on the front. Pretty dense controls too. Like It's a really compact CD player for a radio. I didn't realize what the SR on the top meant when I was there. This is a Sears Roebuck data tape recorder, so you'd use this with like your Commodore 64 or IBM PC if you had a very, very early one, I guess. I'm not sure what makes it computer compatible, but I didn't have a tape deck for this purpose and I wanted one. The build quality on it's absolute shit, but that's what I expect from that era. For a closer look at that mic, it's got this weird 4-pin that I think was common at the time, so like probably early 80s. Uh, it's definitely a dynamic mic. I didn't realize this while I was taking the cap off of it, but it says so on the other side, so it's just an ordinary dynamic microphone. It's basically a speaker. You're, you're looking at basically a small speaker that's optimized for receiving instead of producing voice. Uh, nothing really terribly interesting. This is probably the worst Polaroid camera I've ever seen. The entire thing is plastic. It's all plastic. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out that you open it by actually pressing down the spot where my fingers are uh, to sort of unhook the plastic from the viewfinder. I didn't realize that at first, so when I opened it, I actually like broke a piece of plastic off the viewfinder, but you know, who gives a shit? This thing was horrible to start. Next stop was the VHS section. I've been buying up animal documentaries and things of that nature and ripping them on my live stream. Uh, I don't really give a shit about anything else that's commercially produced, even like the PBS documentaries and whatnot, you know, like Passover, because you can still get those. I'm looking for the, the bottom of the barrel garbage shovelware uh, that was being put out on video during the height of the video era, so like the mid to late 80s, uh, mid 90s thereabouts, when people were just putting anything on tape and selling it. And uh, here's the, the holy grail. I, I couldn't have asked for anything better than this. Uh, this is a unauthorized documentary on Pokemon tournaments. And I want to point out that the object that kid is holding is not a Pokeball. I don't know what it is. I think it might be like a stress relief ball. Perfect. By the way, this is the quality of the stuff I usually get. I didn't end up grabbing this, but here we go. This is just some cheap garbage they were able to put on a tape for the lowest possible price and sell to unsuspecting parents. So that was a pretty good trip. I think getting here early in the day did make a difference. Um, I ended up buying almost everything that I showed you and uh, probably have to do video on a bunch of it later because some of it I couldn't test. So I'm hoping it all works, um, but none of it was very expensive. So I think uh, I, I feel good about this particular trip. Beats the hell out of the last five. So I'm going to head over to uh, RePC uh, and uh, see what they've got now. They just opened. So I'm going through the stuff on the table here, and this is the usual you know, old camcorders and whatnot, and someone watching this has already realized what I haven't noticed and what I just walked by. But don't worry, we'll come back to it. That's not hyperbole. I've never seen anything this cool. A little black and white television with a built-in tape deck. You can see from the teardrops on the side that this thing had speakers hooked onto it, which are sadly long gone. And obviously the build quality is absolute shit, and it's black and white, and it doesn't have its own video input, so I, I couldn't get it, I couldn't justify it. I don't have room for CRTs that aren't extremely cool and unique, but God, I want it so bad. I know they need to make a profit, but I'm just so mad about this thing. I'm just heated about it. This is a Panasonic SVHS reporter camcorder that's been here for like a year. And it's marked at $60. And I get it. I get that's what eBay charges, but it's not even the high-end version. This thing is shit, and they should just mark it down to 15 and then it would sell. Here is one of the most beautiful phones I've seen. I love this thing. It's an ITT, which I think spun off from the phone company back in the day. Uh, I love the angles. I love the solid color. You know, they really leaned in on that red. The buttons felt good. Uh, if I had a use for phones, I would have bought this. It's just a, a real, a real pleasant design to look at. 
junk, 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 junk. Okay, tape players. Okay, whatever, whatever. Here's something interesting. That's a Nakamichi tape deck. It's not a dragon, but it is a damn good piece of gear if it works. This one doesn't, though. So Super Betamax here, but I don't know of anywhere to get tapes for that. Uh, there's a mini disc player in here that's broken, makes clicking sound, it's been there for ages. This stuff isn't moving. I was not at all intrigued by this when I was there. I assumed it was just the proprietary controller for some video editing system, but what it actually is is much more interesting. It is an ADB, like an old Mac control deck, and it's not for any particular piece of software, it's just for anything. So you would install the drivers and then this thing sends uh, like keyboard macros and I think mouse clicks and whatnot, so ostensibly you can hook it up to any application. Fascinating idea, I, I kind of wish I'd grabbed it now. I don't have anything ADB anymore though. Now here's something I had to stop myself from buying. It is, as you can see, a telephone set from a plane, and under here you can see that's the piezo buzzer for the, uh, for the ringer. Uh, and then next to that is the cable retraction mechanism because this thing pops out of its holder and then comes out, you know, four or five feet, something like that. It's probably a fairly ordinary phone. It seems to have a dial pad. Um, I'm guessing it would just run off of an ordinary telephone line, but maybe it needs some funky 400 hertz. It also has what appears to be probably a modem port and a mag stripe reader, so... I'm guessing you could use this to, you know, order in-flight entertainment or some shit like that. Um, or just conduct business, as men did in the 80s. This here is, I'm not sure what it is, I'm not that much of an Amiga dork, but uh, it appears to be a external gen lock or key generator, and I never quite understood what that meant. Um, it takes S-Video, which I was quite surprised by, I, I'm pretty sure, like, the video toaster didn't do S-Video, I'm pretty sure it was just baseband uh, composite. Uh, and uh, it's got a key out on it, which I never fully understood, but apparently is cool. And then the RGB here appears to be a pass-through. That's an Amiga 23-pin D-sub, which is what's used for the ordinary Amiga monitor. So this would presumably be the input, and then the other one would then go out to your monitor. So I'm guessing that this would just impose video uh, onto your normal desktop. This is one of the more interesting video switchers I've seen. It looks really slick. Um, it's not as well built as it appears, but uh, we obviously, you know, it does S-Video composite component. Uh, and then it's got Ethernet and fiber for Toslink. And I, I presume the Ethernet is probably just a hub, not really a, a switched interface. But the fiber, like, I wonder if that's a digital switch or what? 50 bucks is a bit hot to find out, though. So that was not a huge haul, but it was a pretty cool one. Uh, I didn't get a lot, but I did get the first camcorder ever made in history. You'll recall earlier that I said there was something I missed and that we would come back to it. This was that thing. And I'm not joking. It was the first camcorder ever made. I'm very excited. Um, no joking. And uh, it seems to be in perfect condition. So you'll see that in a video pretty soon, I think. Um, it looks like it's working. So I'm excited about that. And I got it for pennies. So that's cool. And I also got some mini DV tapes um, with footage on them that looks like it's probably studio footage, so I'm interested to see what that is. And I just got a mini DV camcorder at the previous uh, uh, trip at the Goodwill. So yeah, that was pretty good. Um, RePC tends to be kind of boring these days, because I think um, people have stopped dropping off like the really cool stuff, and uh, it's just a lot of inkjet printers these days. But uh, this time around, they had uh, a number of things that were really cool. There's a lot of things in this store I guess are cool. The problem is I don't have a barn that I can put them all in. So then I don't have an income that really allows me to just buy stuff willy-nilly that has no purpose and no value and may not even work. So it's not that this store doesn't have cool stuff in it. It's just that I'm not quite hardcore enough to collect it. So it just kind of sits here. So this might be the end of today's uh, Goodwill video. I don't know if I'm going to go anywhere else. Uh, if I don't, then this will be the end of the video and I'll fade out after this. But if I do, um, I feel like it's uh, it's only going to be downhill from here. It's got to be, right? Like, I found some pretty cool shit today and I feel like I'm not going to match it. So, I'd say it was a pretty good trip. And it's only 11, so I'm going to go get some Arby's, I think.